aside from what you do at Quiet Cat, uh, which is actually how we got to meet, I had heard about you through Howl for Wildlife, um, which is a, a nonprofit or- organization that we're beginning to work with now. Um, tell me a little bit of an overview about it for our viewers because we're going to be working with them and actually having them on our podcast. I'd like you to talk about it just for a few minutes. Howl is an organization that we as hunters and, and conservationists and sportsmen and women so badly need. Um, you see a lot of these very well put together organizations on the other side of the fence from us, right? That that want to stop our you know, ability to harvest our own organic meat, right? PETA, for example. Um, they're very well funded, extremely well funded and extremely well put together. But we on, buy all on that the red sportsmen. Paint. Yeah. <laughs> we on the they're a little bit more sophisticated than red paint now. Yeah. <laughs> we we don't have that on, on the hunter side. Well we didn't, right? Until Howell came along. And and so that's what Howell is. It's an action center. And so you can go to howell.org and Howell will let you know when uh, certain issues come up in your area. They'll say, Hey, you know, there's this issue and the ultimate thing they do is they provide a tool so that you as a hunter can easily basically click a button. And it'll write up a, a note for you saying that you oppose this idea and it'll send it to that governor or that senator or that congressman or congresswoman. And so it allows the voice of the hunter to be heard. That's essentially what Howl is. It A, lets you know what's happening politically. So, and it informs you about it. So you can make your own decision on whether or not you want to oppose it. And then it gives you a tool to fight back against it. In my own state of Colorado here, right? We, we had the reintroduction of wolves that got passed. That got passed by 0.5%. That is, I, it makes the hair on my body stand up because I grew up in northern Wisconsin with wolves my whole life. I know what they do to wildlife populations and what they can do to humans, right? It's kind of terrifying. Um, and and that got voted in by 0.5%. And the reality is, is if the hunters would have shown up on vote day, that wouldn't have happened. And they didn't. And so Howell's goal is to make sure stuff like that does not happen, right? And right now in Colorado, we have this ban of, potentially the, a trophy hunting ban, right? The idea of banning hunting altogether for certain species like, you know, mountain lion and, and bobcat um, and how they structure that, right? How they position it on the other side is very frightening, right? They, when they wrote that bill, they titled it a trophy hunting ban. And as a general person, you say, oh yeah, yeah trophy hunting is bad, right? Well, the idea is it's not a trophy hunting ban. It's a ban to hunt, stop a certain type of hunting and that's cat hunting, right? And they even went as far as putting the lynx on that. The lynx is endangered and you can't hunt it anyways. So they do all these sneaky little things mm. to make this bill seem to the general public, we call them the non-hunting public, right? Um, they, they do all these little sneaky things to try to get people to vote on it. And then it ends up passing and next thing you know, we can't hunt. Yeah, and I, I think what's so cool about the program from it's like, as someone was like, well, how do they do that? Um, because when I look at a lot of nonprofit organizations in the industry, you see things becoming very corporate and things very slow to turn and slow to happen, right? So what I like about how is like if you were to get down to the finite details of it, they're like, well, how do they do that? If you became a member and you signed up, what's going to happen is when these initiatives take place, because he said like the hunters didn't show up, right? Well, the way that they would get them to show up is the people that sign up for Howell would receive an email and say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what they're trying to put in place. This is what we don't like about it. Here's a way to contact these people directly to have a letter sent to them so that you can tell them that you feel this way about it. And that's how real things happen. People say, well, why does a letter matter? Well, elected officials receive the letter. And all of a sudden, now they're rece- receiving thousands of them all saying something similar. I hate this. I hate what you're doing. They know they have to get votes in that area. Those letters make a big difference. And technically, you may not believe this, but elected officials are supposed to do what we tell them to do because <laughs> they work for us. I don't know if you have heard that or not. So um, that is kind of like the boots on the ground, how they're connecting the dots to get people involved. How does other things but that's how they would connect. And if you become a member of it, then you get to become a fighting force of it. I'll add there too, to become a member is nothing. It's it, There's a free membership. So if there's one takeaway from this, everybody who listens to this, go to howl.org and be a free member. There, There is a, a, a paid membership too, uh, where you get access to discounts on different industry things and stuff like that. But at least go be a free member so you get notified. And 
And one more thing I'll add on to what you're saying, Kyle, is those elected officials, right? A lot of these issues, like the wolf issue in, in Colorado, for example, that was ballot box biology. And the fact that it got to the ballot is ridiculous. And if we would have been proactive and those letters would have went to the governor, it might have never hit the ballot in the first place. Right. It might not have ever been voted on. And that's the whole point, right? That's where it actually fundamentally, physically makes a difference. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting uh, organization and we're going to be doing more work with them in the future. And uh, I'm pretty proud of it.